Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about mentors and driving instructors and how they differ from a driving examiner, what their job is, what your job is, so that you can pass your road test first time. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about mentors and driving instructors. This is for the GDL, Graduated Driver's License Program, or the GLP as it's referred to in other places, the Graduated Licensing Program. When you get a driver's license, there's three phases. There's the novice phase, or sorry, there's the learner's phase when you do the written test and then you have a permit to drive a car with a driving mentor, somebody that's going to work with you to get you ready to pass the road test and usually that can be anywhere between 180 days and a full year of being in the learners phase and then you move into the novice phase and once you move into the novice phase you can drive by yourself with only one passenger in the vehicle and there are some other risk restrictions you can't have handheld uh, cell phones and those types of things so we're going to talk about the difference between driving instructors and driving mentors and this is a little bit for mentors as well because uh, one of the things that driving mentors need to understand is, is that you're not teaching the student how to drive. That's the uh, job of the driving instructor. Uh, getting a license is something very different than driving after you get your license. And for those of you who have driven for a while and haven't revisited how to get a license, the questions on the license test, uh, doing the speed limit, you know, overcoming all of the uh, sort of social driving pressures you know not stopping at stop signs uh, do, keeping up with the traffic flow going on yellow lights those types of things you can't do all of that stuff on a road test so getting doing a road test is very different than learning how to drive and i want to emphasize that point for driving mentors so corey is here bricks for wheels hall phase is here as well uh when did i get my driver's license <laughs> Is that a question for me, Hall Phase? When did I get my driver's license? I know I got my driver's license when I was 16. So if you're new to Smart Drive Test, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license, veteran drivers to remain crash-free, defensive driving, and helps drivers to get a CDL license to start a career as a truck or bus driver. So that's what we do here. Uh, if you like what you see here, and you like the information here, consider subscribing, uh, hit that thumbs up button. All of that helps us to get the word out and helps everybody else to get their license and be successful in a new career. And uh, just on that note, we're now doing two live streams a week. We're doing Smart Sunday here, uh, which is for new drivers getting a driver's license. And then we're doing another one at Wednesday. Uh, tentatively, or we're sort of in the preliminary stages of that live stream on Wednesday, but the, uh, it's happening at 11 a.m. If I get some feedback from people and uh, smart drivers and whatnot, I might change the one on Wednesday to a different time. Uh, it's specifically for CDL drivers. And this week we're going to talk, be talking about funding, how to get funding, how to save up the money to go to truck driving school because it's a couple of months that you're going to be in truck driving school. It's six to $10,000 depending on which school you go to, which state you're in, which province you're in. So it can be fairly costly it can be a costly investment for many people you know I was talking to a driving school in Toronto Ontario uh, this week and he you know we we both agreed that you know to go to truck driving school is somewhere around fifteen thousand dollars by the time you put pay tuition and then a couple of weeks of living expenses so that's what we're going to talk about on Wednesday so uh, that's the new um, uh, the new format for this year is two live streams one for new drivers and one for CDL drivers are going to go and get a CDL license so Consider subscribing, hit that thumbs up button, and leave us a comment. All of that will help us out, especially if you're watching on the replay. So without further ado, we'll get over to the slideshow presentation here and go through that. So driving mentors, what is their job? What is your job? And as I said, in the learner's phase, you're going to need a driving uh, mentor. And what I tell students is at the beginning so get your learner's license the day you turn 16 the day that you are eligible to get your learner's license and at the beginning start driving start working with people drive with your uncle drive with your aunt drive with your grandparents <laughs> drive with as many different people as you can who will work as mentors with you because 
the more people that you work with and the more uh, driving styles that you encounter, the better prepared you're going to be to deal with the driving examiner when you get to test day. And, but, I, but you don't want to be doing this in the weeks leading up to your test. You want to do this early on when you get your learner. So do that. Uh, you know, and don't wait to sort of six to eight weeks before your test to start practicing for your test. <laughs> That's not going to serve you the best. What's going to serve you the best is, is that the day you get your learners, you're taking every opportunity that you can to drive the car and get used to the car, different roads, different weather situations and those types of things and that's going to serve you well. So you're going to need a mentor uh, when you're in the learner space, somebody who has a full driver's license. In the province of Ontario, I know that uh, mentors must have four years driving experience and if you look at an Ontario driver's license under the picture, there's four dots and the four dots indicate that that person has four years driving, has, has had their driver's license for four years. It doesn't necessarily mean they've been driving for four years, but it, it means that they have been driving for four years. So that's what a driving mentor's job is. All right, so for those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. Uh, I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s running over the road. I ran uh, freight from southwestern Ontario into the United States, mostly east of the Mississippi, but I did get out to LA, Texas, uh, the other states in the west there and that, that sort of thing, but for the most part east of the Mississippi I was a licensed commercial driving. I became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997 I graduated with a doctorate in legal history in 2006 uh, For those of you who may or may not know legal history is the study of policing courts and prisons and my expertise is in policing oddly enough as it relates to traffic and then uh, While well, I was going to university in Australia at the University of Melbourne, I drove for Greyhound for a year before I went to university. And then while I was going to university, I drove part time. Uh, one of the regional uh, lines it was V Line that went down to Ballarat and then came back. It was a milk run uh, back through Bacchus Marsh and places like that in Victoria, the state of Victoria in Australia. And that was very interesting and learned heaps. So you want to see my full autobiography, you can find that over at the Smart Drive Test website, and Corey will put the link up for that as well. Uh, yes, Patricia is here from Bellevue, Idaho. Hello, Patricia. All right, and I am working on getting stories up three or four a week. So look at your mobile phone. Uh, mobile phone, we all have cell phones and mobile phones. So look at your phone, you can see the stories, little 15 second uh, driving tips that I get up for you. So have a look at those for you as well. And uh, one other thing, here it is. And there's the new video this week that I got up. Winter wear, and this is for people working in extreme winter conditions. <laughs> Dress in layers and uh, know that uh, two golden rules about uh, getting warm. Dress in layers and have lots of layers because uh, if you have lots, you can take it off if you get too hot. But if you don't have it, you can't put it on. And if you you want to dress to stay warm when you're outside because if you get cold it's very unlikely that you're going to get warm again so that's basically what the video is about short video have a look at that all right so mentors so the different language for getting a driver's license driving mentors driving instructors and driving examiners and i am a driving instructor i went to school to trade school, I became a driving instructor. I know how to teach you how to drive a car and break down the skill set that you need to be able to do that. I also know the specific uh, skills, maneuvers, and abilities that you have to have in order to pass a road test. And this is what driving instructors do every day. They p teach people how to pass a road test. Yeah, Al likes the huckleberries on the, uh, on the thumb there. Yes, freezing off your huckleberries, let me tell you. Uh, when it's minus 40 on the prairies or North Dakota or my favorite, Twig, Minnesota in the States there. All right, so driving instructors, I'm a driving instructor. Driving mentors are gonna people, be people that help you to get driving experience. So mom, dad, aunts, uncles, Maybe your siblings, if they're old enough and they've been driving for three or four years, they can help you as well. Friends, neighbors, all of these people are going to take the time out to get you driving experience, to get you in cars. And as I said, get your learners the day you're eligible to get your learners and start going after people to let them drive their car. Just drive to the doctor's office, drive to the supermarket, drive you know, to your sports events and those types of things. Take whatever opportunity you can to learn to drive 
different cars with different people in different weather conditions and on different roads and all of that is going to help you leading up to your road test you know and in the weeks leading up to your road test you want to stick with the same mentor in the same car that you're going to be taking your road test in now driving examiners and some people use instructors and examiners interchangeably that language driving examiners are the people who actually test you at the driving center the dot the mto here in british columbia it's icbc the examiners are the people who test you uh, they're, they're representing the government and they're the ones that determine whether you pass your road test or not. So that's what driving examiners are. All right. And no, as I said in the introduction, your road test is different than actual driving. And this needs to be emphasized to mentors. And as well, there's a video here on teaching new drivers and Corey will get that up for you as well. And you can have a look at that uh, if you are a mentor and it'll give you some uh, ideas about how to go about helping somebody to learn how to drive and whatnot. And then allow extra time. And this is probably one of the most important skills uh, for mentors is that you're going to need to allow more time for a learner driver to be able to get to the destination that you're trying to get to. And I remember the first time that I experienced this as a driving instructor, I, I was teaching truck driving and uh, I went with a student. I thought, oh, we'll just pop down there. We'll pull these trailers back to the yard or something like that. I forget why we were going down to get the trailers and whatnot. But I went out with the student and uh, hooking up the trailers, it took literally three times the amount of time that it would have taken me to go down and get the trailers myself and bring them back to the yard because students need time to learn and you need to budget half to a third more time to be able to do something so for example me going down and getting the trailer say for example would have taken me 40 minutes it took us 90 minutes with a student because students are doing everything according to a procedure they're trying to remember all of the steps involved and they're trying to do it right and they're not confident in their ability to be able to do it so there's hesitation and because there's hesitation uh, it takes longer so make sure that if you're working as a driving uh, a mentor or if you're a new driving instructor that you have to budget time for the student to be able to learn and the student to be able to work through the processes that they, he or she needs to work through in order to be successful in preparing for his or her road test all right so be specific uh, driving instructors can give you specific information about road test routes what specific examiners are looking for because we know all the driving examiners at the DOT Center and when you go out with a, a student who's learning how to drive just work on one thing every time so for example go out with the student and work just on left hand turns go out with the student and just work on right hand turns for half an hour 40 minutes and those types of things and know that students are going to fatigue a lot faster because not only are they driving the vehicle and paying attention to traffic and everything else that's going on they're also learning and learning takes a great deal of energy and i strongly encourage all of you who are watching this now or watching this on the replay to be learning something new in your life all the time because then you can empathize with other people who are trying to learn something for example myself i do jujitsu i i do french not as much as I should, but I'm learning something. I'm also learning every day doing this as well because to teach is to learn. And so you need to be specific when you're uh, doing that. And uh, as I said, students are going to fatigue more often. So do not exceed the student's ability in their to take on information, those types of things. All right. Uh, as I said at the beginning, you know, when you first get your learner's license, make sure that uh, the vehicle uh, that the student sets up the vehicle correctly so that they're comfortable, they can see, they can observe, they can drive the vehicle and those types of things. Especially if it's a bigger vehicle like a minivan or a pickup truck or something like that. Make sure that the student uh, adjusts the seat, adjusts the mirrors and those types of things so they can see. And Corey will put the video up for that on uh, nine steps to adjust the vehicle, adjust the mirrors and those types of things. And this will work for any vehicle, okay? Road signs. These are reasons why students fail road tests, okay? They don't pay attention to the road, set, road signs. So as a mentor, one of the things that you can do for a new student is to get him or her to read the road signs. 
because you're going to fail a road test by not reading the road signs, not driving proactively and doing stuff before you actually get into trouble. For example, a lane end sign. If the lane ends and you get right up to the end and then you try to move over and there isn't a space, you're going to be you're going to be assigned demerit points for that. So stop signs, school zone signs and those types of things. Uh, it's important that you read school signs uh, for the purposes of passing a road test and being successful. Stopping at stop signs, knowing where the school zone signs are and those types of things and adjusting your speed accordingly. Remember, uh, for the purposes of a road test inside the city, it's 30 miles an hour, 50 kilometers an hour. Outside the city, it's 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour, unless otherwise posted. So you can't follow the flow of traffic for the purposes of a road test. And when you're practicing with a mentor, make sure that you're doing the speed limit because you don't want to get to your road test and not have been doing the posted speed limit for the duration of your training as a learner driver. So make sure that you do that uh, when you're practicing. All right, slow speed maneuvers, turning, parking, and maneuvering the vehicle. As I tell students again and again, slow speed maneuvers are going to improve your overall driving. It's going to make you a better driver. Yes, I know for mentors and driving instructors, the last thing they want to do is go and stand in a parking lot and watch a student drive around pylons. It's not sexy. It's not sexy at all. However, it is the fundamentals of learning how to drive a car. It teaches you mastery of the primary controls, the steering wheel, the throttle, and the brake, and it teaches you where your vehicle is in space and place. Anybody can sit behind the wheel of a motor car and they can point it up and down the road and make it go up and down the road, but doing slow speed maneuvers, doing parallel parking, doing two point reverse turns, three point turns, all of those maneuvers are going to improve your overall driving, so spend time on those. If the situation becomes overwhelming, and this tends to happen more at the beginning when the student just first learns how to drive, and you know is on the first two or three lessons, the student, he or she may become overwhelmed, and that happens, and if, it become, if the student, he or she becomes overwhelmed, stop in a safe place in a gas station, a parking lot, on a residential street, or something like that, Take a break, let the student get out, go for a little walk, come back, do that again, okay? So do not push the student to go and go and go. And uh, unfortunately at, tr at truck driving school, uh, sometimes that's what happens. Uh, the student gets pushed and you know they become overwhelmed and they just simply can't handle it. So know that as well, that you might need to take a break. All right, wrong slide there. Okay, so that's basically it. We can go into question and answers about uh, learning how to drive, passing a road test, driving in the winter time, because I know here in Vernon, we have a heap of snow and it's still snowing outside, so it's good fun. So remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right, transition back, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so Patricia's saying in Idaho, they're supposed to get 12 inches of snow. I think we, we're gonna get another 12 inches of snow here in Vernon as well. Yeah, so hey, it's snowing. I actually think that if we get another 12 inches of snow here in, in Vernon, it'll actually officially be winter time here. And actually, I was thinking we have so much snow here, and it's actually supposed to go down to minus 20 degrees tonight. Uh, just let me have a look here. Uh, minus 20. So it's supposed to go down to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit tonight here in Vernon. And I was actually thinking that there's so much snow on the roads, I was actually going to go out and do a video on how to drive. Uh, with high snow banks and obstructions at intersections and when it's slippery and those types of things uh, because I walked down to the grocery store and I came back and I was noticing at the intersection that the intersection was in fact very icy and that's one of the things uh, when you're driving in the wintertime know that right at the intersection it's, it's going to be slippery there because the cars come up to the intersection they hit the brakes they slide they create friction on the snow and ice and when you create friction, it melts a bit of the snow on the top and then it, it freezes and then it creates ice. So you get ice right at the intersection. Uh, so again, <laughs> we're well into winter now. So you want to slow down back from where you actually want to stop. Half a block, one block back, start slowing down. 
get slowed down to 10 or 8 miles an hour and then creep up to the intersection and stop where you actually want to stop because you don't want to get caught out when you actually get to the intersection. Okay, uh, <laughs> so Elle's saying that left turn anxiety, that left turns are not her specialty. Yeah, uh, L and what I would suggest, L, uh, in terms of getting better at left-hand turns, uh, if you're driving, you might want to revisit the fundamentals, going back to the parking lot, working with the pylons and those types of things, uh, and then go into the residential areas and do some left-hand turns until you get more comfortable with doing them, and then head out to complex intersections to practice left-hand turns more. Okay, wireless, how common is left turn anxiety? I avoid doing left turns because trying to judge oncoming traffic speed and safe gap is very stressful. Uh, wireless, uh, you are not alone in your anxiety and trepidation to do left turns. This is something, it's, it's an incredibly complex maneuver. It's high risk because uh, not so much for the driver, but more so for the passenger if you get t-boned if you misjudge the gap and you get t-boned the passenger is going to sustain fatal injuries they may even die because i've talked about this before in terms of t-bone crashes uh the vehicle you know your vehicle is on an angle the vehicle comes in and hits right at the door and there's very little protection at that door to protect the occupants inside of the vehicle it's the one crash that there simply isn't enough vehicle there. There isn't enough, you know, because it's basically a skin, a thin piece of steel and some plastic on the inside of the door. And, you know, it just physics limit engineering safety in cars to protect them in the event of a T-bone crash. So this is the one thing that they're still trying to work on. And I'm not sure how they're going to figure that out. It's be the real genius that figures it out. Okay. So yes, so you know, doing, avoiding left-hand turns, unfortunately it's something that you're going to have to be able to do for the purposes of a road test. You're going to have to be able to execute left-hand turns to be successful on a road test. So again, what I said to L there, go to a parking lot, work with the pylons, and then go to residential areas and work on them in residential areas. And as you get more and more comfortable, then build up to complex intersections to do left-hand turns, and again, I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing the stories right now. Uh, but leave me a comment, send me an email. I'm more than happy to help you out with your left-hand turns and get you going with that. Okay, L, I agree with driving as many um, with as many mentors as possible. I only drove with my instructor on test day. It felt very weird driving with a stranger. Yes, and and, and that's an excellent point, Alan. I'll just reiterate that point. When you're in your learner's license, when you're learning how to drive, drive with your neighbors, drive with your friends, drive with your mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, your uncles, your aunts, anybody who will let you drive their car. Uh, and you know, if they think, oh, you, you can't drive your car because you're a learner driver. Well, the statistics show that <laughs> when a learner driver is with a mentor, you're actually more safe than if it's just the driver by him or herself because there's actually two people driving the car. There's the mentor watching and looking and observing and the learner driver is driving the car too. So there's essentially two people driving the car. It's kind of like an old couple, right? <laughs> we'll talk about that later, but you know, there's two people driving the car, so you're actually safer. So, you know, beg, borrow and steal. Just ask everybody if you can drive, drive them to the doctor's office, drive them to the grocery store, wherever you're going, get in as many different vehicles with as many different people and that way when it comes to test day and a stranger gets in your vehicle you're like oh i, I got this i can completely handle this you're not going to be put off by some gruff driving in, uh, examiner getting in your car and you know with their clipboard and writing stuff down and making you completely nervous when you're doing your test okay my friend jonathan is here from new york city excellent hello jonathan uh for me, driving with an examiner was nervous naturally when I took my road test uh, with my instructor. I used, I'm used to it, but an examiner, the nerves began to work on me, especially during the road test. Yes, and that's what it's going to do. But again, no on tests. We do what we practice. And it's the same thing with martial arts. When you go to tournaments, you do what you practice <laughs> at the at the dojo, right? You train to train harder. You And when you go to tournaments and those types of things, you're simply gonna do what you've already done. So 
if you have that experience of driving different vehicles, of working with different people in the car, then you're going to be ready for test day and test day you're just going to go, oh yeah, I've done that before. I just do the same thing I've been doing for a year, 180 days or however long you've had your learners. And you're going to be successful on your road test with the least amount of nerves and you know stress and those types of things on test day. Okay. Uh, Sodol, uh, what about when it's raining on highways and you want to change lanes? How do you deal with those uh, things? Okay, so that's a good question. When it's when you're on a highway and it's raining, of course you got your windshield wipers on. Again, it's about communication. Mirror signal shoulder check. Put that signal on to indicate to other traffic that you wish to move over. One of the mistakes, and, and this is again another characteristic of social driving, and actually I'm going to write this down. Uh, signals social driving and then I can write that down in my list of characteristics in terms of social driving but this is another characteristic of social driving is, is that people think that signals are to tell other traffic that you're going to do something not that you're requesting them to help you out to do that maneuver and this is the important point about changing lanes and <laughs> I've seen this again and again and again when I teach truck drivers when I teach bus drivers they get in the vehicle they're driving down the road I ask them to change lanes and they go well nobody will let me in and I'll just look over at them and I'll say you know if you turn your signal on and request to move over I bet you they do and sure enough they turn they put the signal on <laughs> the seize part and they move and they change lanes so it's important first and foremost put your signal on and request from other drivers that you're going to move over notify other drivers that you want to change lanes minimum three flashes on the signals before you move over so mirror signal shoulder check looking the uh, vehicle behind you generally should be in the top third of the mirror to indicate that there's enough space between you and the vehicle behind you three flashes on the signal when you just want to move over mirror signal shoulder check again you're going to have to accelerate uh, moderately because you're going on an angle so you're uh, covering more distance so to maintain your speed you're gonna to have to speed up a little bit leave your signal on until you're completely in the other lane and then cancel your signal when you get completely in the other lane and Corey's put the video up for you on how to change lanes safely and correctly for the purposes of a road test and for the purposes of defensive driving it, the you know there's some skills on your road on your road test that you can you know move on from after you get your license but there's some that you need to keep and that is one of them that you need to keep for the purposes of your road test okay uh, sometimes I use gas pedal instead of brake can you tell me what's the solution uh, okay so the solution may be that are you two footing it are you using one foot on the throttle your right foot on the throttle and your left foot on the brake if you use one foot you're only supposed to use your right foot one for the throttle and the brake okay uh, and that will probably fix your problem uh, Julie uh, down in California thank you for answering my email I look forward to hearing from you again yes and I'll get back to you there definitely Julie and we'll get you going there and help you out uh, and yeah look forward to that okay so definitely I'll get that response to you okay uh, L can we do a refresh on pedestrians when can you turn in relation to where they are with two lanes four lanes etc yeah excellent question L so one of, so on a road test you have to have one lane of buffer between you and the pedestrian and that is if the pedestrian is going away from you not if the pedestrian is coming towards you if the pedestrian is if the pedestrian is coming towards you you need more than one lane of space all right so say for example that you're going to turn right at an intersection it's four lanes so the pedestrians the light turns green the pedestrian steps off the curb you'll have to wait until the pedestrian gets to the center of the roadway before you can turn right so you have that one uh, lane buffer of space between your vehicle and the pedestrian all right okay so you're confusing the throttle and the brake and you're just using your right foot excellent okay so what I would suggest to you is Corey will put the video up for you on learn to drive which has exercises in it uh, for teaching you where your vehicle is in space and place and it will teach you mastery of the primary controls get those 
36 inch one meter tall pylons go down to the parking lot set them up do the forward figure eights the reverse figure eights driving up to the pylon reversing to the pylon and that will help you with mastery of the control and uh, mastery of the primary controls and sorting out the difference between the brake and the throttle okay the, the throttle is always the one on the extreme right it, and it doesn't matter which side of the road you're driving on whether you're driving on the right side or the left side it's always in the same place it's always going to be on the extreme right is the gas and in the middle is going to be the brake or on the left if you're driving an automatic if you're driving a manual transmission it's always the one in the middle okay so you need to work in the parking lot with the pylons to get mastery of those primary controls because if you're having difficulty and you're confusing the brake and the throttle I would encourage you not to be on the roadway okay until you get that figured out and you need to figure that out in a parking lot all right so excellent 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 <coughs> okay so Four components of any road test anywhere in the world. Space management, speed management, observation, communication. Space management is the fundamentals of a road test. Not only is it the fundamentals of a road test, it's also the fundamentals of defensive driving. You must have this, uh, this skill in place regardless of where you are in the world, regardless of what class of license you're taking, regardless of where you are, how old you are you must have speed, space management. If you're not near anything, it's less likely that you're going to hit anything uh, when you're driving. So you have, to min, uh, you have to have a minimum of four to five second following distance when you're in traffic. Uh, you must stop at the correct place at intersections before the stop line, before the crosswalk or sidewalk. And if those two conditions don't meet, uh, don't exist, then where the, two, the edge where the two roads meet. <clears throat> is where you stop in intersections when you stop in traffic you should be able to see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement and that it that is good defensive posturing and that is something you should keep after you get your license as well so uh and then don't drive into an intersection you can't clear especially on a road test if you are in an intersection and the traffic light goes red on a road test that's an automatic fail the other piece of for automatic fails on a road test, if you strike a fixed object, and it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter whether it's the concrete barrier at the back of the parking space at the test center, it doesn't matter if it's a chain link fence, it doesn't matter <laughs> if it's a road sign, it's a fixed object, you strike a fixed object on your road test, that is an automatic fail. I can't emphasize that enough. So that's space management, speed management. You need to drive the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less for the purposes of the road test. And you need to get the vehicle up to speed as quickly as possible. So many times and so many vehicles with so many different st students, they think because they're preparing for road test, they gotta dawdle along like little old granny to get in the car and you're like, ooh, and they're not getting it up to speed. And I'm just like, you know, come on, what are we doing here? You got to get it up to speed. So when you come out of the intersection, you get it going. You got to get it up to speed as quickly as possible. So get your foot into it. All right, drive it like you stole it. All right, so that's what you need to do for the purposes of road test. Observation, you need to have scanning patterns in place. And sc scanning patterns are directly linked to speed control so far down the road in check your centimeter far down the road both shoulders of the road check your instrument panel and I've had students say to me you know how much can you go over how much can you go under on a road test you need to have a very tight tolerance on the posted speed limit for the purposes of your road test and it shouldn't be more than 10 or 15 seconds because for the purposes of the road test you're cycling through your scanning pattern every 10 to 12 seconds. So every 10 to 12 seconds, you're checking the instrument panel. So if you're five over, it should come down within 10 to 15 seconds because you're, you're doing that scanning pattern. If you're over for a long period of time, 20 or 30 seconds, the instructor's going, or the examiner's going, oh, they're not scanning properly because they're not looking at their instrument panel. So in look the instrument panel far down the road, Check your left wing mirror far down the road. Check your right wing mirror. That's your scanning pattern for the purposes of your road test. 
Okay, turns, you have to shoulder check minimum two times. You must shoulder check on a road test. If you don't shoulder check, you will not be successful on a road test. Shoulder checking is simply 90 degree turn of the head in the direction that you're going to turn. So for turns, approximately half a block before the turn, shoulder check, it's only quick turning of the head and then immediately before the turn. But if you've been sitting at the intersection for a while, you may have to uh, shoulder check two or three times before you actually get around and execute the turn. All right, uh, lane changes, mirror signal shoulder check. So shoulder check, mirror, shoulder, and or sorry, mirror, signal, and you're gonna do that almost at the same time. And then shoulder check and make sure there's nobody in your blind area. And then three flashes minimum on the signal and then start moving over when the way is clear and shoulder check immediately before moving over again. When you're reversing, okay, 360 degree scan around the vehicle, look out the back window and then start backing up. Do not put, uh, engage the vehicle in motion before you look. You can use your mirrors, you can use a backup camera, but use it intermittently. Don't use it primarily as your only source of observation when you're reversing. And then if you reverse more than one vehicle length, stop, do a 360 degree scan around your vehicle again, and then continue backing up. So that's observation. And then the last one is communication for the purposes of a road test. Uh, five pieces on communication, lights and signals. Horn, use your horn sparingly because in this day and age it's a sign of aggression. Uh, eye contact, if you're not sure what another road user is doing, get eye contact with that road user before you proceed. Uh, hand gestures, make sure you use all five fingers. Don't tell them they're number one on a road test. And then lastly and most importantly, the position of your vehicle on the roadway communicates intent to other road users. If you're in the left-hand turning lane, there's a high chance, very high chance, that you're going to turn left or some other road user driving a car that's in that lane is going to turn left as well. So those are the four fundamental components for passing a road test. Anywhere in the world, regardless of what class of license is, regardless of how old you are, where you are, as I said, where you are in the world, okay? So my friend Tim is here, Drive Smart BC. If you need any uh, really good information about road rules and uh, road user behavior, statistics, those types of things, uh, Tim has an excellent website to check out uh, spe specifically for those people here in the province of British Columbia in Canada. So check out his stuff as well. Uh, caught on red. What about when you are making a left-hand turn? So are you, so uh, Tim, are you saying, so you're, you're, you're committed to the left-hand turn and the light goes to yellow, the traffic hasn't cleared coming the other way, you're sitting in the intersection, the light's gone red. Is that is that the question that you're asking me, Tim? I just want to clarify and make sure that I'm answering the right question. Queen of Romania, um, wondering how the fundraising is going for your friend Ann. Uh, it's it's going a little slow, kind of got stalled with the, uh, with the, with the holidays and those types of things, but we're definitely getting back on track here, and we're going to get going on that again as well here as soon as we get a few other things sorted out so okay um <laughs> you are most welcome tim anything we can do to help you out so uh all right so we're kind of i i <laughs> i'm stuttering all right so let's talk about yes okay so that's what tim was asking me in terms of a left hand turn okay so you're making a left-hand turn, and this is a great question. This goes back to the anxiety that a couple other people were saying that they had about left-hand turns. You need to know that if you are committed to the turn, you are in the intersection, and you've gone up, and you're waiting with your front steer tires in the front crosswalk line. The traffic is coming. The light goes to yellow. The light goes to red, and that's going to happen. That the cars aren't there. Know that you own the intersection. You own the intersection, so you cannot proceed with your left-hand turn until that, until the oncoming traffic clears and you are absolutely sure that they have stopped on the other side of the intersection. You have to wait. You can't do anything about it. You can't go. You can't back up. Do not back up. That'll If you back up at an intersection, that's an automatic fail on a road test, so don't do that. That's another one. I'll have to put that <laughs> down. I'll write that down as well. Okay, don't back up at the intersection. You have to proceed, you have to go forward. So you need to know that you own the intersection. When the traffic clears, expediently clear the intersection. Make your left-hand turn. 
Now, unfortunately, this is not a clear, I can't definitively state to you whether you're going to be successful on a road test or you're going to fail. It's up to the discretion of the examiners. And unfortunately, the examiners don't always make the right call when that traffic situation materializes. And sometimes I've had students say that they failed, unfortunately, because of that, even though they're doing the right thing that they have to do according to the road rules and to sit and for the purposes of safety, because you're already committed to the intersection. When your front steer tires are on that front crosswalk line, you are committed to the intersection. Okay. And also you're waiting for the light to go yellow and sometimes you're going to have to turn on the yellow. You've already committed. You've probably moved your vehicle forward. Now you're in the intersection. If you're in the intersection, you have to go. If you've waited because somehow you made the right decision and realized that the traffic wasn't going to stop coming through on the yellow and you waited with your front steer tires on the crosswalk line, then you can't go into the intersection. And this is, it's tough because it's one of those things that's going to be up to your own discretion about whether you proceed or whether you wait. And yes, it's embarrassing when you're waiting for the next traffic light to go because you're sitting there across the crosswalk, but it's better to be sitting across the crosswalk than in the intersection. And, and this is one of the things, one of the reasons why left-hand turns create anxiety for people and it can be so difficult. So great questions, lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of, you know, lots of different scenarios that potentially could protect, uh, present themselves in terms of driving. Uh, Farin, I don't have a driving school, a physical bricks and mortar driving school. All of my driving uh, instruction is done online on my YouTube channel and on the website there. So you can definitely have a look at that as well. Harpreet, uh, how to safe driver on snow and windy weather. Yes. We call that when it's snowing and it's windy, we call that blizzard conditions. And really, uh, you shouldn't, <laughs> if you don't have to go out in a blizzard condition or in snowy conditions, we encourage you not to, to stay off the roads if you can, uh, because it's, it's treacherous. There's no doubt about it. Especially, uh, I mean, we have tons of snow here and people are saying, oh, it's snow. we have a snowstorm. No, we don't have a snowstorm. We have snow. It's snowing. <laughs> now, you stick a bit of wind with that, 40 or 50 kilometer an hour winds, now you got a snowstorm. Because when it's just snowing, that's just a lot of snow. When you got wind and snow, now, now it's interesting, especially driving on the roadway. So uh, a couple of things I'll mention, Harpreet, in terms of winter driving and keeping yourself safe in the winter time. Uh, good windshield, wi uh, windshield wipers on your car. Uh, winter washer fluid so you have good visibility. Make sure that you know how to turn on the defroster to keep the windows clear and those types of things. Also make sure that you have good winter tires, good tires on your vehicle and that they're properly inflated. First and foremost, make sure that your vehicle is working well. And as I mentioned earlier, make sure that you slow down back from where you actually want to stop and then creep up to where you actually want to stop so you can get stopped. Intersections particularly are going to be icy. And the reason, as I said, for that is because the vehicles come up, they break, they slide on the ice and snow, create friction, they melt a bit of water, and the water thaws and freezes, and then it, you get ice at the intersection. So know that intersections are going to be slippery, okay? Good following distance. Know that a two to three second following distance in a passenger vehicle is under ideal conditions. Driving on snow and ice, is are, these are not ideal conditions. So you wanna increase that out to four to five seconds to keep yourself safe in inclement weather. Uh, turn your headlights on. If you don't have daylight running lights, turn your headlights on. Uh, even if you do have daylight running lights now, I think about that for a second, turn all your uh, lights on. That way your tail lights are activated as well. And that's uh, going to keep you safe because you're going to be seen and see, right? Good scanning patterns. Keep your lots of uh, excellent space management around your vehicle and all of that's going to keep you safe. <laughs> you are most welcome, Tim. Thank you for the question. Arlene, a happy new year to you as well. Epic, my friend. Rick, will it be safe to advance into the intersection when making a left-hand turn? Non-priority left arrow signal or stop at the stop line, then go once the oncoming traffic clears. For road tests, get a package. Uh, what I suggest, Epic, and this is how I teach it, okay? There's two schools of thinking when it comes to left-hand turns. 
the one school of thinking, and this is less in favor amongst driving instructors. The one school of thinking is that you move right into the intersection. I do not subscribe to that for either a road test or for defensive driving because if you're in the intersection and something goes wrong, somebody runs the red light, you're in the intersection, you're gonna get clobbered. Whereas, what I tell students is to stop with the front tires on the front crosswalk line. That way you're committed to the intersection but you're not in the intersection and you meet the gap. So you're watching the traffic come towards you, you see the gap, when you see the gap that you're going to meet, you start moving forward into the intersection at that point. The other reason that you move forward to meet the gap is, is that when the gap presents itself, you've got a bit of speed built up. So you're already doing 10 or 12, maybe 15 miles an hour when you hit the gap. That way you are reducing the amount of time that you are across oncoming traffic because that's the danger is, is that you are crossing the path of oncoming traffic. So. By getting a bit of speed as you're moving forward to meet the gap, you're reducing that. And as well, as we mentioned previously, if the light goes to yellow and you see a long line of traffic that's still proceeding through the intersection or the traffic is backed up or whatnot because it's congested, then you're not going to proceed into the intersection. Yes, it's going to be embarrassing and sitting there because uh, you're across the pedestrian crosswalk, but it's better to be across the pedestrian crosswalk than it is to be in the intersection on a red light after red light's gone five or 10 seconds. And I've seen that. And actually, if you watch the video on left-hand turns, there's, there's a, a clip in that that I have on dash cam where the tractor trailers, the super bees are coming through the intersection and the pickup truck is in the intersection and well into the red light makes the left-hand turn and clears the intersection. But that's what you have to do. You have to get out of the intersection on a left-hand turn. And again, I reiterate this point. If you are across with your front steer tires on the front uh, crosswalk line, do not back up. Never back up at an intersection. I see people do it all the time. Do not do that. If you do that on a road test, that is an automatic fail, backing up at an intersection. Uh, and you know, again, it's one of those funky things it's up to the discretion of the driving examiner. It's going to depend on who you have, whether he or she determines that that is an automatic fail. Because if things go wrong, as they potentially could, you could potentially fail your road test at that juncture. But I'm going to say most of the time, that's not going to happen. Okay, Unless you're taking your road test in a big metropolitan city where you're going to have to go to a very complex intersection and traffic is incredibly congested. Uh, yes, it may happen, but for the most part, part that is not going to happen to you most of the time you're going to be doing your road test at 10 o'clock in the morning or sometime between three and those types of things and you're not going to encounter those situations uh for a left-hand turn and you know driving examiners want to go back home anyway you know because you know they want to be out for the minimum amount of time so it's not likely you're going to be driving around very far in congestion in large metropolitan areas okay so know that as well all right Prakash, uh, on a green light, should I stop before the white line or enter the intersection while doing a left turn and then and when there is pedestrian at the left side of the road I am turning onto? So again, Prakash, if the way isn't clear, if the traffic's still coming, stop with the front tires, the front steer tires on the front crosswalk line. That way you're committed to the intersection, but you're not in the intersection. And that is the key to making a left-hand turn and you're watching the traffic come, you're waiting for the gap, when you see the gap, then you move forward into the intersection and meet the gap, okay? And that is critical on our left-hand turn for the purposes of driving defensively and passing a road test. As you move into the intersection, when the gap presents itself and you meet that gap and you make your left-hand turn and that way you reduce the amount of time that you're into the intersection and it's excellent defensive posturing and that's what you wanna do for the purposes of a road test. Excellent discussion uh, here around left-hand turns because left-hand turns are complicated. They are a high-level maneuver and they require a lot of practice to be able to do them well, okay? Especially for new drivers. And they're also an incredibly uh, difficult maneuver for uh, tractor trailer drivers, for bus drivers and those types of things. And again, on Wednesday, just keep in mind that we're now doing another live stream for CDL drivers on Wednesday at 11 a.m. 
and if I get feedback from smart drivers I may change the time or even the day of when that is going to occur but I'm going to do two live streams now one is for new drivers getting their first license and the other one is for CDL drivers uh, getting a, either their truck or bus license and pursuing a career as a bus or truck driver and this week we're going to talk about going to truck driving school how you come up with the money whether you get funding whether you finance that or whether you get a sponsor so that's what we're going to talk about this week at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, for the CDL uh, presentation the live stream we're going to hold here uh, Wednesday and you can find out the details as well because I've already got the uh, information up all right and then next week on the live stream we're specifically going to talk about uh, driving examiners what his or her job is what your job is how to pass your road test first time the requirements for a road test what you need to practice what you need to be prepared for and the questions that he or she may ask you but I can tell you right now any road test anywhere in the world I can almost guarantee you that you at minimum have to parallel park you have to reverse stall park which means you have to back into a parking space and you have to do three-point turns you need to be able to do those three maneuvers minimum for the purposes of passing a road test because remember seven-eighths of the road test is in a forward motion one-eighth is the slow speed maneuvers the parallel parking the reverse stall parking three-point turns it's that one-eighth <laughs> that gives students the most grief the most difficulty in terms of passing a road test however again I mention and I say and I reiterate if you can do the slow speed maneuvers if you can parallel park well if you can three-point turn well if you can do reverse stall park well it's going to improve your overall driving so spend the time on that and I know and I've talked to smart drivers and I've had conversations with them and they say oh my driving instructor says I'm too good for that no <laughs> that's not it at all driving instructors are bored out of their skull watching you drive around a parking lot and it's the last thing they want to do so they don't do it they just tell you tell you some bunk which is not true whereas all students can benefit greatly from learning the fundamentals in a parking lot you learn mastery of the primary controls and you learn where the vehicle is in space and place because it's much better to hit a pylon than it is to hit another car to hit a curb to hit a fixed object because as I said hitting a fixed object on a road test is an automatic fail so spend the time in the parking lot and the other thing that I counsel you to do if you're learning how to drive is when you're about halfway through your learning halfway through your lessons go back to the parking lot and, and do them again do your forward figure eights do your reverse figure eights do your forward up to the pylon back those types of things okay all of that will make you a better driver and make you better prepared to pass the road test all right uh, Yugi I'm a driving instructor new to Canada can you let me know right words at right time uh, Yugi you know the, the the funny thing is I wouldn't worry too much about the language as a driving instructor uh, <laughs> because in my experience even if you have all the right language it, it doesn't translate with the student so between you and the student you kind of have to come up with your own language of what you're gonna call things and 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 the terminology and how you're gonna say things and those types of things it's it, I can't really give you the terminology you you need to sort of work that out with your student okay and you know maybe English isn't your first language maybe you're a new driving instructor and don't really know, know all of the terminology but you know what needs to be done to pass to get the student to pass his or her road test so just work out a language for you and the student and the other thing that I'll tell you Yugi uh, don't you know you can say right and left turn left turn right those types of things but <laughs> I always found that it was just easier just to point you know turn right turn left because uh, I would always mix that up and it confuses the student and whatnot so just point okay uh, Tim uh, if you are on Facebook you may wish to mention your CDL live stream in the adept group oh excellent thank you so much Tim that's awesome I'll look that up uh, maybe you could just send me the link for that Tim and I'll definitely mention that that'd be great uh, Yugi you're welcome my friend epic uh, well said Rick for the low speed maneuvers what would be helpful to get 
a driving school to practice those then take a road test if they have an offering of combined review and road packages yeah you kind of epic you really have to go after a driving instructor to get the him or her to do that for you because most of the time they're simply not going to do that uh, what I would suggest to you is is that everything in the learn to drive video all of that is in there okay the exercises that you can do to be able to do that so what I would suggest to look at the video go rent the pylons you can rent them from a rental shop uh, for 10 bucks a day you can get five of them uh, and just go down to a parking lot with your with your mentor your dad your uncle whoever and just work on that in the parking lot and I'm gonna shoot a couple more videos that'll help you out in terms of being able to do those slow speed maneuvers and you know have a bit of fun with it <laughs> Be aggressive with the brake, be aggressive with the throttle, be aggressive with the steering wheel, especially now in the winter time when we all have snow. Uh, you know, let the vehicle break loose a little bit and all of that will uh, help you out and uh, get you going there, okay? Excellent. Uh, Katie, working on my permit. Yes, uh, I just got your notification very late. Uh, that's odd. I think YouTube is, is really working on a lot of things here in terms of switching over to the new uh, the new platform because their studio beta is going to come online here pretty soon. I, I really appreciate what YouTube has done in, in terms of the long transition period because I think they're getting a lot of the uh, bugs worked out in terms of the new live streaming and those types of things and I really appreciate how they've done that. It's worked out really well. So awesome. Excellent. Okay. So again, just to reiterate the four components of a road test speed management, space management, observation, communication, doesn't matter where you are in the world, doesn't matter what class of license you're going for, you must have those four components in place. And I say again to students, space management is critical to both passing a road test and defensive driving, defensive posturing, because a lot of us get stuck into social driving, and we were talking about social driving. One of the characteristics, one of the many characteristics of social driving is, is that drivers think that signals are to tell other drivers, I'm doing this. No, it's that's not what it's for at all. Uh, signals are to tell drivers that you wish to move over. You're requesting him or her to help you out because you're gonna move over. Now that you are, and so many of us see that when people make lane changes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they make a lane change like this, right? That's not the way you make a lane change. Uh, and if you have minimum three flashes on a signal before you actually start to move over into the lane, it's going to give other drivers ample time. The first signal uh, gets allows them to locate you. Uh, sorry, the first signal gets their attention. The second signal allows them to locate you. And the third signal allows them to take some sort of action okay and that's why we go with three signals when you're lane changing or turning or any time you change direction of the vehicle and that's important in parking lots too and for the purposes of a road test make sure that you're signaling signal when you leave the parking space signal when you leave the parking lot uh, signal when you're parallel parking all of that is imperative for you to be successful on your road test Thank you so much, Tim, for sending that to me. I'll definitely drop a, a notification in there and uh, put the word out for people so they can get going on their CDL. Excellent. Arlene, Rick, I have my license in the left turn lane. Can you turn on a yellow light? I have done that, but the person who was in the car with me said I didn't, I wasn't supposed to. Uh, you have your license. Yes, Arlene, if you are at a yellow light on a left-hand turn, you have to clear the intersection. So yes, you can turn on a yellow light if you're already committed to the intersection and you're going to go. Yes, clear the intersection on a yellow light. Uh, most yellow lights are somewhere between five and seven seconds. So you have plenty of time to clear the intersection on that yellow light. So most yellow lights are five to seven seconds and then there's a two second dead space in the intersection. It's a, it's a safety buffer. So from the time that your light goes red to the light that the cross traffic light goes green, there's a two second delay from the time the one goes red to the other one goes green. It's basically a safety, uh, engineering safety feature in the intersection in terms of the traffic lights to keep it safe. So you have anywhere between five and 10 seconds on a yellow light to clear that intersection. There's plenty of time for you to do that. And if you already have your license, 
there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. It's, you know, and I have some dash cam footage that I'm going to put up and I'm going to put together some videos on making left turns on yellow lights and those types of things. And that really should help you out. All right. There we go. And the other thing that I'll get Corey to do is Corey, I'll put the video up for you on our, not the video, but the playlist on winter driving. And then you can have a look at that as well. And head over to the Smart Drive Test for, uh, website for those of you passing a road test. The link is down in the description. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in the description. I'll have a look after the uh, live stream here. Uh, pick up your pass your road test first time checklist, and that'll make sure that you're going to be successful on passing your road test first time. Uh, Jonathan, I'm uh, glad you're doing a stream where you're covering CDLs and trucks. Too bad it's on when I'm already at work. I might be able to be on the stream for half an hour before starting my run. Oh, awesome, Jonathan, that'd be really great if you can show up. Like I said, Jonathan, it's not uh, it's not set. I just kind of got started on these last week with the CDL uh, live streams. Uh, so if you think there's a better time that we could do this, that definitely I'm open to that suggestion. All right, excellent. So anybody, thank you everybody for attending the live stream today. If you're watching on the replay, hit that thumbs up button. If you like what you see here, consider subscribing as well and uh, leave us a comment, we'll definitely help you out. Uh, and if you passed a road test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on passing your license, that is awesome. And uh, if you have a road test coming up in the next week or so, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day, bye now.